covered in lint here. <laughs> but welcome, welcome to the last dogwood class. Yes, we got it done. You're gonna get it done today or tomorrow or the next day. But um, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for finishing your quilt. We're gonna talk about doing the seeds in the center. We're gonna talk about um, leaves, how to do the leaves. Leaves are fun, I love leaves. You kinda of get in your own little mojo there when you're doing the leaves. And we'll do the stems. I'll show you how to make a little knot out of thread to look like a little, you know, a little knot in the wood. And then we're gonna do the background. And I may try something tricky in the background. I usually do an echo stitch in the background, but this pattern on the fabric kinda of is calling to me to try something and see if it works. We'll, we'll find out together and I'll show you if it works or not. So um, thank you for wanting to watch this again. And if you wanna stay um, up on all my upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe on that little button down there somewhere. And um, here we go. Last class, number five. So I thought I'd show you a little trick on how to hide imperfections that might happen when you're quilting. Well, I've had this on my quilt and I haven't really addressed it, but I have this little, these little black dots right here that are really showing up and bothering me. And so it won't come off. I think it's permanent ink and I don't know how that happened, but sometimes these things happen. So I'm gonna show you how I fix things. And I have done these tricks on award-winning quilts that have been best of show and I'm going to show you how to fix something if you don't like it on a flower you've already put together. So I decided I'm going to cover this up with fabric. So I went and got some of this yellow over here and I'm going to cut a little wedge. There's my yellow and I kind of look, oh the wedge is kind of kind of curved like this. And sometimes I make it bigger so that I can cut it down later. Okay, and the paper wants to come off, but that's okay. We'll take the paper off. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit big, not quite shaped. So I'm going to cut it down a little bit more, shape it up. I'm going to go off to a point. I always want to make sure you go off to the point. And then I'm going to put it right over my little oopsie that we don't really know. I might give it another little haircut here. Maybe not make it so. There we go. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And I covered that up. Bring my iron over and I can steam this. And now you cannot see where I had that little oopsie. This is the magic of steamacine because you can add pieces on top of pieces as you go, if you change your mind. So here's a really common thing that happens when you're doing renegade thread play. So I've been stitching over here on this side and I've been stitching over here and then all of a sudden where the fabric is loose, you'll kind of see, I'm gonna move this like this, where it's kind of puffs up a little right in here. Okay, now don't panic when that happens. First of all, if you have, um, Quilter's Dream batting, 100% cotton, it's stretchy. So you can kind of stretch your fabric like this. Then you're gonna take your nice hot iron and you're gonna bring it over here. And you'll notice I'm bringing it right to my sewing machine table. And here I'm steaming and all that. And it lays right down and now I can continue sewing. And you need to do this on a big flat surface too. So I'm taking my pins out and then I'm taking my iron and I'm kind of distributing the batting, the quilt top and the backing fabric, kind of smoothing them to the edges. And you'll notice there's a little fold right here. So I'm going to readjust the quilt right there. Okay. And sometimes you'll see that you have to adjust these pins that are way out here you can give it a little tug but I'm going to do it all the way around removing my pins and distributing the weight or the mass or this and it's kind of weird because it's really stiff here very light here now as I start to add um, 
So, and we're going to quilt the leaves. The leaves will tighten up also. And then we'll do the background. But for right now, we're just going to distribute the weight. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, I had a little fold right in here. But what I did is, when I started just kind of pushing things around, it distributed that fabric. Yes, there's a lot more bulk right here, but when I go to stitch it, I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to do the leaf first, and that's going to shrink up this, and then I'm going to do the stem, and that'll shrink up the stem, and then this little fat fold that wanted to happen isn't going to happen because these are now shrunk. So we're going to go around and do our stem and our leaves, and then we'll come back and take care of our background fabric. And I just think this is looking really lovely. Here we're going to do the center of the flower. We're going to do the seeds and soften this roughness. But the first thing we need to do, because there's a lot of layers, we are steaming. Yeah. Steam is our friend. Heat and steam. Now you want to make sure it's not wet, because if it's wet, you can't sew through it. So I've got my dark green thread on first, bringing it all to the top, need to fold it up because it's kind of crunchy and thick over here, and I'm just going to kind of go around the outside edge. kind of just making swirls you know going little circles you want to catch around the edge so that doesn't lift up but I'm just kind of making little round circles around the lime green one more time around the outside in a little bit just so that we have stitching equally on this center green. This is the same stitch you would do um, if you were making bubbles or rocks, but I'm making seeds. And it's the same loop-de-loop -loop going around in a circle. I go about three times, and the fun part is, is I'm not trying to stay right on each other on the line. I want to see a couple rows right here. It gives a, a little more dimension. But who knew not being perfect could give dimension but that's what it's doing so when I'm going around I'm going to go around twice and maybe go off so that you can kind of see and then I spin out it's a lot more dimension and if you'll notice I'm not going real fast, am I? I'm going to this in, and I'll work my way over to here.
simulate one. And that looks pretty darn good. So all three Seeds. centers are done. And let me just show you what they look like. Okay, one of my favorite things to there stitch is a leaf. I love to do leaves. And once you kind of get it, uh, your design down, they're very relaxing. Now, one thing I want to show you also is I use a lint brush because, you know, your batting kind of is coming over here. So I always you have a lint brush in my studio. I forgot to show you that. Okay, the first thing with a leaf is I'm going to do the center vein. I'm going to treat both these colors as one petal. Okay, and so I need to put a center vein down here to start. That kind of gives you a hint on how you're going to curve your side veins that go in. When you do a center vein, don't ever do a straight line because there's no straight lines in nature. You have to do a curvy line. And depending on how you curve or where you place that first line, if you place it over to the side, it looks like the leaf is tipping over. If you place it over here, it looked like it's tipping the other way. So I always try to make a wiggly line down the middle. It just gives so much dimension to your leaf. Another thing is we are using a variegated thread. I do not use variegated in any place but on the leaves. And it gives a lot of excitement because the light colored thread kind of pops to you. It makes the leaf look like it's twisting. And um, that's the only place I use variegated thread. Otherwise, it doesn't work because we want our light thread on our light fabric and our dark thread on our dark fabric. So here we go. I'm going to go and do the center vein first. And now I'm going to go up this side of the see that. I'm going to go now up making little side veins and I'm going to, they're not straight either. I go along the edge and then I'm going to make kind of an S shape and go up to that line. Okay, and then I'm going to go back down and I'm about an eighth of an inch. You can see that. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go up and back down and then I'm going up and back down see my thread is changing color and that kind of looks really cool okay sometimes I'm on the line sometimes I'm in the background I don't care this is impressionistic I like the look of it not being you know we're not doing feathers here we're drawing sometimes I over exaggerate the curve it really makes the leaf have a lot of movement. Okay, now when I get up here, I'm going to travel to the center line. Traveling. Stop. Now I'm going to go down this center line again because the center line in leaf is thicker. And so, but I'm on about a sixteenth of a way away from that first line. Okay, now I have to go up this other side. This is my, not my dominant side, so sometimes you have to think about it. We want them to be like V's, okay? We want them to be like V's. We do not want them going the same way. We want them to, this side, the right side will meet over here, left side over here. Upside down V is what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go along the edge, up and back down. Now when you get scared, remember I told you, stop. And I'm going to go along the edge, back up, and back down. Then along this edge,
you go. Let's look at that. That's a nice looking leaf right there. Sometimes I will also maybe go around, not on the leaf, I'm in the background. Just following the outside, giving it another thickness, kind of smoothing out the edge. And there you go. We have that beautiful leaf. Now, I'll come back in later, maybe with this lime green thread, because we have that in our thread kit. And I may just come in and do a little wedge up here, up here. In fact, why don't we do that? And now I'm going to go up this side. Just your quilt. Mine's falling off the table. That one looks good. I might have to fix that though. That's okay. We still have time. So let's go over to this leaf. So I'm going to just travel here. So I want to start at the top. And I'm just going to go down and curve it down. And I go up the right side because I'm right handed. Okay, now here we're just going to simulate because it's underneath the leaf. I mean, underneath the petal. And I go back down the center vein. And now I'm going along the edge and then up. Along the edge and then up. Beautiful leaves done, all with a variegated thread. There you go. And we'll come in and we'll highlight with other colors later.
stem. I put the brown thread on and in the bobbin I'm putting this gold because I ran out of bobbin. So sometimes what I do is I just get a color that's kind of close for in the bobbin. Okay, let's do a stem. And I'm going to do a back and forth motion for the stem. And then I'm going to try and make a little knot. And I'll show you how to do that in the side of a stem. It always kind of looks kind of cool. swirls and now I'm just going to go back to up and down and stitch right around those. swirls here. So each little black spot that I'm going to, I always use my um, lint, sticky lint roller. And um, I'm going to do my, kind of my signature move is doing an echo, starting around the outside edge in here and then going around until you're in the middle. And I love this fabric with these lines. So 
So what I'm going to try is I'm going to do a little echo stitch in here. And then as I get out, I may change and follow the pattern of the in the background fabric. And I've done that a lot, and it gives a nice, interesting look. But I always want to be respectful of the main subject matter. I don't want the design in my background to overpower and stand out more than my flower does, because this is the main uh, part of my artwork is the flower and so the background design that I do is usually something that's complementary but not overpowering so just remember that this is not a place for feathers obviously okay so an echo stitch is really nice and subtle it smushes the um, background down and it's an equal amount of stitches because you want to have kind of an equal amount of stitches throughout all of your quilting any kind of quilt so right now I've got black in the bobbin and black on top. And black is a pain to stitch with because it's slack. Oh. I also have had to oh. change my tension. My upper thread tension, remember we had it on a lower number. I've been sewing with it at 3.5. I'm going to raise it back up to like a 5.0 because there's no sticky in here. This is just batting and fabric. And so you can move your... Um, thread tension to a higher number. Okay, let's see. Here we go. is all free motion. Now I'm stepping out about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. That's what I'm trying to do. About the size of the veins in the wood. And then you just keep going around, stepping out about a fourth of an inch. Put your head down there so you can see it up close. And any extra lighting always does help. As I start to go in the center, I kind of just start swirling it around. And then when I get down to the center here, boom, I stop. When I'm doing an echo stitch, I start up close to the flower and then we'll work out to the edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do right in here, then I'll move over, I'll do right in here, and I'll just work my way around the quilt, doing little echo stitches. Well, nothing's as good as finally being finished with your quilt, and I just finished the last stitch in the background, and yoo we're so excited. Now, what we need to do is, I'm not going to crop it with a ruler yet, because I'm going to block it on the wall and I'm going to show you how to do it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut away the batting. I'm just cutting along the edge, the excess, because we need to defuzz this baby. That means I need to go with my, um, my lint roller, get all of the fuzz off this, Flip it over, get some good light, and cut off all the little thread tails that you might find. There we go. And then we're going to be ready for blocking. So I've got all that off, and then I'm right now going to press this with my nice hot steam iron. <laughs> all the little bubbles will lay down nicely. It's amazing how many times we've been ironing, ironing this, isn't it? And it can handle it. Although I think my iron might be dying, but. And I'm gonna flip it over and do it from the back side too. You've got your thread painting here. 
And because we use the quilter's dream batting, the quilter's dream batting relaxes. It's not going to stay wonky. Um, it just, because it's 100% cotton, it's going to just mush down and be nice and flat. Okay. Using this little water bottle. And I'm getting my quilt wet. But this is how I'm going to block. Okay. I'm up here and I'm shooting it with some more water, which it looks like I'm running out. And then I take some T pins here. And I'm kind of pulling it and scratching it and putting the T-pins in. Probably doing four, four, four T-pins all the way around. Then I'm going to take my iron, if I can find my iron. Here's my iron. Get it nice and steamy. Get it like pumping, pumping, pumping with steam here. And then I'm just going to go and start steaming it. Now, sometimes you have to turn it down like this to get the steam going. And then I'm gonna put it up here and then I'm gonna press it. And I hope you can see that. Press it. And then I'm gonna let it dry. I'm not saturating it in um, the water. I'm just lightly spritzing it just to let it relax a little bit. Okay, that's how I block. Then overnight, we'll let it rest. Then in the morning, I'll crop it and um, put binding on and a sleeve and a label. And make sure you date it. I think it looks great. I don't know about it at your house, but it's really hot here. I know. So anyways, we're done with the dogwood. I'm so excited. She looks gorgeous. I'm very excited about this class. We did a really good job together. I hope you hung in there with me and I hope you get that success out of a beautiful quilt, an award-winning quilt, okay, no less. And I hope you learned a lot of tips and tricks. It has been so fun to do this with you. I do plan on doing some more patterns and more tips and tricks. So if you want to be you know, notified, if you want to be notified of um, the next video, you need to subscribe so that you won't miss out. But I'm going to do some other uh, of my patterns. They will not be as detailed as this, but they each pattern has its own little quirks that you need to know about. If you've taken the dogwood class, you can translate the color chart, understanding the pattern, all of that stuff to any of my patterns. But each pattern does have its own little um, way of layering it, how many layers. And so um, I'd like to explain those to you so that you can have fun because I know a lot of you have patterns out there. And I will be having some kits on my website, on my Etsy, Etsy shop. So just hang in there. It's really I hope you're enjoying it. I have a lot of fun doing this. Um, and I want you to have fun too. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to have a class with me. And I hope I can see you sometime in a real class. So take care of yourself. Love y'all. Bye.